Hi there, today we are going to go to a Goodwill I have not been to in a long, long time. This is the Avondale Goodwill. Jocelyn and I used to call it the most magical Goodwill because when we first started going here, we were finding deals after deals after deals. They, have, they used to have bins and they took the bins out and now they have a huge hard goods section. I decided to check out the Christmas section first and I found this made in Japan mid-century modern splatter design leaf shaped plate. It did not have any chips. It does have some crazing, but it does have age, so that is expected. And I thought that was really neat that it was made in Japan, so I decided to put that in my cart and then I'm giving you a look at the shelves. I didn't really find too much more Christmas that I wanted to take, but I did find some that was interesting to look at and look at the bottom, see who is the maker. This big divided dish had a lot of crazing right there in that one section that was stained and it was marked Japan, which was nice, but these are kind of hard to ship. So I left that for somebody else. And then right next to it was a baggie and this has the Christmas spider legend. And I learned about the spider legend from Whatnot. There was a seller called Rustic Orchid and she explained this legend. And at the end of the video, I will have the story and you can pause the video and read about the legend itself. There was also a felt hat in there, but I think the nicer things were this little spider, the, the legend, the story, and it also has a new in the box made in USA tinsel. I was really hoping to find some ornaments, um, not necessarily shiny bright ornaments, but some uh, made in Japan flocked figurine ornaments, maybe some knee huggers, but I did not find any of those. There was this cute box of these three snowmen. They looked like they were playing instruments. And let's see, there were also a lot of wreaths I'm gonna show you. They had a ton of wreaths. This little basket was cute. Uh, decided not to get that. Here were some ornaments here. I was hoping, ooh, maybe something snuck by somebody. That was very bejeweled, but that was missing one of the jewels. And they had some loose things. So I did decide to look through the box to see if there was anything else, like I said, that snuck by someone's attention, um, but I didn't really find anything too spectacular. There were some beads, they didn't have a price on them. And then down at the bottom, they had these string of chili lights. These were, always remind me of Arizona. My mom used to have chili lights up in her kitchen. And then this was a big, big, big wreath that had some carolers on it. And here I'm going to show you the wreaths. I have a wonderful wreath that a viewer of mine sent me. I'm going to insert a picture of it here. Wheezy Bama Girl, I love it so much. I almost walked past this plastic beautifulness, but luckily I spied it right when I was walking by it, which seems kind of weird to say, but it was in my sight, but it wasn't in my sight. You know what I mean. I thought this was interesting. They had taken a book and made it into looks like Mrs. Claus. It, I think someone could fix that up, fix the book up a little bit. And they had some Hallmark ornaments there. This was marked Lefton, Lefton, Sri Lanka. And I did look it up. And so I believe that these are from the late 1980s. It was, he was missing his hand. And then I felt that this Santa Claus looked like a miner with the ornament hat instead of the typical red hat. And then we're getting back to the Hallmark ornaments. These are my first, second, third, and so on Christmas ornaments. I don't usually deal with um, Hallmark ornaments. That's a cute little mom-to-be ornament. I know some of them can be worth money, and especially if you have them in bulk. That, of course, will bring you good money. I'm looking at the ribbon here, thinking some of this ribbon would look neat embedded in resin, but I decided not to get it. And giving you a look at the wreaths again. They had quite a, quite a collection of uh, Christmas items here in Avondale. That snowman was missing his nose. And, oh, I spied a Talavera, no, no, Tonala miniature vase. So I decided to sneak past the rest of the Christmas and go over and get this miniature vase. I am part of the Petite Palooza on Whatnot, and that I might sell that there, or it might go on eBay. I haven't decided yet. And this had a whole bunch of little knickknacks. I love knickknacks and little figurines and stuff like that. So I decided to look at these more. I thought this little girl holding the cat was cute. And then the, look what I spied in the back. Yes, it's Peggy Carr. And I did try to look 
or the signature in the store by holding it up to the light. And it was funny, the second I got home and I brought it, you know, took it out of the bag, I was like, oh, there's a signature. It was right on the front. I think my thumb was hiding it. But definitely, I always pick up that pressed glass if it's Peggy Carr or Sidon Striker. Since I can never pronounce it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then this was a nice little tile, decorative tile. It was marked from the Dollar General or Dollar Tree, I think. And so I left that there. I thought these figurines were cute. I expected to see a Dollar Tree or Dollar General sticker on the bottom of them. These I would have picked up if there was a set of four, even five I would have picked up. Japan, made in Japan items usually come in sets of fives. We're so used to them being even numbers. Those seemed more contemporary, but I did like this pottery, this little piece of pottery. And when I checked out, the man who was checking me out was like, oh, I like the green on this pot. <laughs> so it was nice to get a little second approval by somebody. It just wasn't me. This was a lid. Oh, it probably went to that egg in the front there on the left. I just noticed that. And then a man was also looking at these. These were marked $12. And the reason why we both did not pick them up is because of the TJ Maxx sticker on them. But this caught my... There's Barney. He's shaking his head. I'm tickling his ears. Uh, this is a uh, dresser container. This is a candle holder, obviously. And it was marked Japan. It was in really good shape. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get this. And then I saw that it was $9.99. So I put it carefully back on the shelf and this was a more contemporary owl Yvonne is having an owl sale and so I am looking for owls but decided against that one and went back to the dresser jar I do eventually get to the dresser jar after I guess I'm looking at everything else first there it is I do like picking these up it was priced pretty well people do like collecting these and it didn't have any cracks in it sometimes there's cracks because of the age Oh, I have the windows open. Do you hear the trucks? <laughs> I swear I don't live by the highway. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. That was a hobbyist piece. And then this platter is a pure one. And they had that for $9.99. While I was driving here, I was hoping that the shelves would be full because it is quite a bit of ways from where I live. And I hadn't been here in a while. And if I remember correctly, the last time Jen I brought Jenny with me and the shelves just didn't have very much on them. So you, don't, you do run the risk of the shelves being empty, but I was pleasantly surprised with how full the shelves were, uh, but didn't find too many things to buy, but was still a lot of fun looking for everything. That, that was a chalkware Indian in the front, and then I was kind of surprised that that lid came off of it. It was $4.99, a little pricey, but for the Owl Always Love You train that Yvonne is hosting, I thought this is perfect. It was in really good condition definitely has some age to it so that went in the cart on the plate then I decided to do some more investigating in the same area I don't know why these clear bottles were with that green divide it looked like a planter I think someone put those there they obviously did not go together that's kind of strange that didn't the dish didn't have any markings on it this one did have a marking on it but it was so extremely faded I could not read it. I'm sure if I really, really wanted it, I could probably figure it out. I thought these were bowls, but no, those are bongo drums <laughs> put upside down. And that was a sock with a panda head on the top. Here are what the shelves look like some more. A swan and a bride. And now we're moving on. This container definitely has some age. I like the orange top on it. I don't mind shipping canisters. But there was just the one, and I decided to leave that. I've seen this uh, style of figurine before. If I would guess, I would guess that it was made in Korea. It did have a chip to the flower. And this figurine was super cute, but it did not have a price on it. And I know for a fact that they do not uh, let you buy anything without a price on it. So I left that on the shelf. And then I kept going down on the same side of the area here and these reminded me of those angel figurines it was so big this one was marked $12.99 and an equally large one was only $3.99 and that said just floral but they look like those angels that have no faces and that guy he was checking me out <laughs> and then this was some art it had some 
some starfish on it and then I realized it was upside down so I turned it around it kind of looks like there's a fish there not quite sure it's very abstract the person had not signed it it was very heavy because it was a big piece of pottery but I stopped to admire it anyway and then I noticed there were some kind of uh, nautical ties that were near it the one the green tie I did stop to look up that brand name because it uh, was very specific so I, but it, I didn't see any high sellers on that. I don't normally sell ties, but if the tie was worth a trillion dollars, you better believe I would have picked it up. <laughs> and then I always check out the baggies because you never know what they're going to combine. And then look, I won. And then here was this nice plate. It was very, very pretty. It was marked Germany on the bottom. Those aren't huge sellers for me, so I usually don't pick up dishes like that. This was a nice door knocker, had a ship on it, but it did not have a price. So I left that there as well. And let me see, there were some other nice things in this area. What am I, go oh, this. I picked this up because I am part of the kitsch crew and I thought this was very kitschy. There is a surface mark on it right there, but I thought this would be perfect for a kitsch crew sale. I have one of these um, that my mom gave me that has my baby pictures in it. So I decided to get the little photograph album. And then over here were a whole bunch of these same teapots. They were all marked Nantucket Home. This one is not. This one had some kind of uh, kanji marking on the bottom. And the two strawberry ones were exactly the same. I thought they were very sweet, very tiny. And then in the back there was a pomander, I think, and it had the forget-me-nots in Alaska on it. So, of course, that grabbed my attention. Had some surface markings to it, and it was marked $6.99. I thought this was nice, and it was, it's interesting that they don't tape the lids on their teapots at this store. This would have been taped to the moon and back at the, the Goodwills where I live. That was a nice shape and it had that little lip for your lid so you knew the lid would stay on when you used it. This was a pottery piece. It was very, very sooty and on the bottom and it had a candle stuck in the, the piece itself. I just felt that that would be a lot of work to get the candle out. I usually will stick things in the freezer that helps pop the wax out easily. Then I noticed that on the back of this, this was sold at Christmas tree for $2.99. So I decided to leave that definitely on the shelf. And then at first I thought this Lennox piece was a wine chiller or cooler, but I believe it's actually for your kitchen utensils. It's in really nice shape. It was a good price, so I decided to get that. Then look at this. This is silly. This is the brand on all of these, and they're all $15. And it's not, you know, one of four, two of four, three of four. They're individually priced at $15. And that one was missing its lid and it was still $15. It was funny how this store had huge high prices like this, but then other, t other items, the items were priced nice. So here is the brand Hammersley and I looked up sold comps on worth point and they are not worth $15 a piece. I believe, unless I'm missing something, you tell me if I miss it. Now that's $50, but that's a special Gulliver's travels and that one's 35. But the rest, for the most part, except for that one. Okay, there's an exception to every rule. But for the most part, they're not worth $15 a piece. I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not saying I'm the know-all, end-all, especially if Hammersley bone china. But I thought that was amusing. This little wheelbarrow was $9.99, so I decided to merchandise it and put it with the other high-priced china. And then <laughs> tell me what this looks like to you. This also had some flowers on it. It said, get well soon. And that looks like a bedpan. Look, tell me that doesn't look like a bedpan. I don't know if that was a joke at one time or that definitely has the bedpan vibes going on. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. This was marked $9.99 and that is a recent sold on Whatnot for $12. So like I said, things are a little high here, but there's also some things that are not high. And I'm not going to complain about it. I'm just stating facts that this was high priced. 
and it's interesting <laughs> to me. That was Mark Dansk. And now I'm just checking out Maker Marks to see if anything jumps out. Sorry, I swung around pretty fast here, but I caught in the corner of my eye these paperweights, but both of them had little dings on them, so I did leave them both on the shelf. And then this one was probably most likely, oh, I think it was marked Made in China, and it was in really good shape, but I left that with the other ones. I have lucked out from time to time and picked up paperweights at Goodwill that aren't damaged. That's the hard part of not finding them not with little dings on it. This was only $1.99. I liked that it had definitely had some age to it. I was seeing if there were any chips to it. The finger was still intact, but there were chips to the leaf right there and to the petal of one of the flowers. So that stayed on the shelf for somebody else. And then giving you um, some more looks at the shelves. I thought this elephant was super cute. It needed to be cleaned up a little, but that's always fun to do. Here was a little bell. And then in this little box, they had a little pixie, more contemporary, and I think it would hang on the side of your planter like that. I'm always hoping that I will find some vintage pixies at Goodwill. I almost got this. This I'm holding up to the light because it is actually amethyst glass. It's not black. It had something in it. You can see in the feet there, see how it's purple? It might have had a lid at one time because there's a rim on the inside of the piece. But see that stuff there? I tried to scrape it off with my fingernail because I felt if it was cleanable, uh, it would have kind of shown some kind of movement with me scratching it with my finger. And I couldn't find any movement of it. <laughs> it's kind of weird to say. I was afraid that it wouldn't come off. So I decided to leave that on the shelf. Now we're looking at the end caps. Here was a single book end. Definitely had some age to it on the bottom. And I am in the candle section. There were quite a bit of those. I think that I found four more of those. They probably were left over from a party. I'm looking to see if there was a glassy baby snuck in here. <laughs> that would be fantastic, but not yet. Maybe one day. And then I spied this kind of a goblet with a, a signature on the bottom of it. It came with a candle that was marked $6.99. And then this looked like the piece before that had the soot on the bottom. This piece was marked. I felt it was also missing a lid of some type. I just got this feeling. You you have a lid missing. <laughs> and then let's see that they have they have things grouped nicely in this store. Here were some made in Hawaii wax candles. I like how they have the glasses grouped together and the plates, the candles. It's very easy to find the the item that you want to look for not necessarily by color. Our stores don't do it really by color anymore. I think maybe, let's see, what store does? Oh, the Royerstown Goodwill. They still do things by color, but they have switched over to the wire shelving. So it is kind of dissipating a little bit. I remember when I first started YouTube and I would make get comments about how it's strange that our shelves were color coordinated. And I always found it weird that they weren't color coordinated. Now we're we're all in the same boat now. This is Mark Rosenthal Netter. This is a good name, I believe. I have sold this brand before. And here are some recent solds to the pitcher. So one was 34 and one was 15. Maybe the 34 had free shipping. Those were really old dates. I think that the top one was from 2018. I was seeing if this was Port Marion, but it was not marked. It's a nice little covered casserole dish. And then behind it, those pieces caught my eye. I didn't feel that lid went with this coffee pot. There is the brand name for you. They had quite a few pieces of it. I thought the coffee pot was an unusual piece. And I'm gonna show you the teapot here. See how that doesn't fit? It's a little bit too big. And then I noticed the teapot had a green lid. And when I did look up these pieces, I was right. <laughs> the, the lids are green. They had some cups. And I believe those were berry bowls. It looks like there was a rubber band, so maybe something was rubber banded at one time. The spout on this is super cute. Look how cute that is. It has like a little lip there. Bloop. <laughs> I thought that was neat. I was checking it out. I felt that one was too small. And then I felt that one went with it. So I, the teapot, to me, had no lid. Still making sure that's incorrect. 
and oh there's another truck <laughs> here are the berry bowls I was gonna get the coffee pot but then I noticed there was a chip there I did like the colors and the little uh, design on the coffee pot definitely will keep my eye out for that in the future and let's see now we're in another area oh yes we're in the mugs and Jenny's not with me <laughs> so I'm free to look at and pick up all the mugs I want now the running joke is Jenny's always telling me that I have too many mugs so if you're new to the channel I'm I'm joking <laughs> uh, let's see I will pick up mugs with or without her if they are spectacular and stand out I don't think I I think maybe I saw one or two that was kind of interesting but nothing I don't I didn't bring home any mugs there was a plastic Budman cup. Oh, this one coming up. This one, some of you might know what it does. So when you put hot liquids in that, the eyes open real big. So right now it's sleepy, but you could put your hot coffee or your hot tea in it. And of course, then you have bright eyes. I thought that was funny. But I didn't know that till I Google lensed it. <laughs> there I'm thinking of the owl train. This was a more contemporary piece. Still cute though. Here was a lid. I thought that was had probably a bottom to it at one point in its life cute little puppy dog and I think there's something else here that I grabs my attention that's not those those were glass knobs for a dresser that was a figurine I think a made in Japan figurine and then down here were some contemporary pieces that are made to look vintage which I think is pretty neat and those either play music or light up probably light up and then I didn't pick up this piece because it was $4.99 and it was so small the other piece was $4.99 but it was a little trinket so that leveled it up and then this is embarrassing whoop <laughs> I pulled the knob right out of the little chest of drawers oops but I put it back and I was making sure that wasn't fire and light that butterfly <laughs> If you watched my shorts on this channel, uh, Yvonne Thrifty Rich noticed that Kate picked up a fire and light butterfly in her video of the two of us shopping together. And I lucked out and I live the closest to the antique mall. So once Yvonne told us about it, she messaged all of us. And I said, well, I'm closest, so I'm gonna go get it. And I got it and it is fire and light. So that's pretty spectacular. So you'll see that short under my playlist of shorts. It's one of their most recent ones. This was a nice little hobby, hobbyist piece, kind of a skinny elephant there. I thought at first it was a bank, but I think it is just a figurine. I was going towards the checkout and I spied in the corner of my eye <laughs> these Lucite owl, um, no, bookends. And in the store, I was like, these weigh a ton. They actually do weigh a ton. They weigh over six pounds. And I have been slowly collecting vintage Lucite things because I do work with resin and I made a short of these, of uh, how I cleaned them up and how they are nice and bright. And you'll see at the end of the video how nicely they cleaned up. And I love so much their eyes because their eyes look in two different directions. This was another nice uh, handmade piece, a turtle covered pot dish thing for your table, but it has a crack. I'll point out the crack in the lid right there. I, oh, I thought I did. Maybe I did it earlier. The dogs have come in and now they are sniffing and snorting. So if you hear sniffing and snorting, it's not me. It's Charlie and Susie. <laughs> and let's see what else. Um, happy camper sign. Oh, I thought this was interesting. Had a duck and a pistol and an ashtray. And then I realized the duck didn't go with it. But the pistol and the ashtray went together. And further down here on the bottom there we go um on another section actually i have no 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 sue i have picked this up um up in wellsboro i had spice rat us uh, like spice containers with that same emblem on it and i thought that was interesting now this was marked 25 dollars. i was like oh ha, ha, well goodwill once again it's so expensive but then this is marked seagrove on the bottom and i did look this up in some seagrove pottery some sells really really high and i thought well i'm willing to spend 25 if this is worth 125 but see it had a tiny chip there and i could not really find i found this one and it looked very close to it and that is a um, active listing so i did leave that there 
these cute little birdies I thought would be cute for the petite palooza. And then the googly eyes will always remind me of Jocelyn. So I shook the googly eyes for her. <laughs> and then uh, this is going to wrap up our trip to Goodwill. Here is everything that I found. And like I said, you can pause the video coming up right here and read more about the Christmas spider legend. I hope you enjoyed this video. The items here will be listed on eBay. There's a link in the description of this video or will be on a whatnot sale. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this type of video, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. You can hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free and the bell notification button because that will tell you when I drop videos. I hope you are having a great day. Thank you so much and I'll see ya.